Hey, Joyce and Fred. Uh, this is Gary here. Hey, I know um, you sent me the uh, message before about my RV, but I thought I'd share a few things with you. And again, this is not to be a uh, ploy for you to buy the RV, but I figured I know that you have a lot of interest in kitchen counter space and storage space, and I wanted to share some information with you uh, in helping you to make your decision when you uh, look at the different features on the different models. Um, grabbing my paper here. This counter right here uh, in the kitchen from the wall all the way to the end is uh, five feet four inches long and the kitchen counter this direction when you go from the wall going forward is two feet and then it goes to three feet over here. So you've got um, five feet four inches long two to three feet inches wide and of course, I put the uh, black uh, counter top on over the sink so you can see you have more working area space. And of course, I removed a lot of the stuff that I had in there because you probably couldn't see the counters very well the other day. Uh, the other thing I want to share with you, because I know you're worried about pantry space, uh, I'm going to give you a representative sample here. This, uh, These cabinets that are to the right and left above the sink are... 16 inches deep and 30 inches wide from top to bottom. However, just to give you an idea, I put a uh, can of beans, a big pink can of beans, and a ragu spaghetti sauce here. You can easily increase this, the pantry space in these cabinets to even make them bigger for you by putting in uh, one of those uh, shelving units, those plastic shelving units, and you actually can fit normal size cans easily uh, one on top of the other like that with one of those things. So you can basically increase the uh, space capacity in your cabinet space on the top and the bottom, which are, really are pretty deep. But, uh, you know, again, that's just another thought. You've got it on both sides like that. So you'd be able to do the same in this one as well. Um, <clears throat> the cabinet that's down here below the uh, stove is approximately two feet in depth. So it goes all the way back. The one up top here is uh, that opens up here is about 1.2 feet going back and uh, what else did I write down this cabinet here that's pretty deep below the uh, oven uh, it's 19 feet long and it's got a deep um, deep bottom so you can fit pots and pans and everything like that in there no problem at all um, these are drawers on the uh, off the sink the three drawers here open up completely and uh, they uh, measure 17 inches from the inside to the end here, like this. So you can see they're pretty deep. <clears throat> uh, and also, the other thing that I do, and it's going to look kind of junky right now. It's clean, but junky. Uh, where I have the barrel underneath the sink, and you may not see this very well. There's quite a lot of storage space behind the pipe. Uh, it's probably about a 1.2 feet uh, from the wall going to the pipes that you could put another one of those plastic um, shelving things in there and store more pots and pans or extra stuff like that. I actually have a large, um, um, what am I thinking of, um, crock pot that's sitting in there and I have boxes with some other stuff back there. So I have quite a lot of space that goes past the pipes there that I am able to store quite a lot of stuff. So I just wanted to throw that stuff out at you. <clears throat> the other thing um, that I know that you had concern about um, was also for additional counter space just want you to recall remember the idea that I said to you guys the other day you could easily put a um, hinges here and have a cabinet that hangs down like this with you know small legs that would be behind it and you can swing it out like this and bring it over to about here to give you maximum space of more working space if you wanted to and then easily store it right back <clears throat> by swinging it back and just having it lay in here. There's actually a gap here of about, uh, about three-fourths of an inch, so it would easily nicely fit right in there. Uh, I know that you have grandchildren, and as you know that the um, room <clears throat> will not have this tan chair in there. So if you were sitting over in the area where the, couch is, where the couch is and the recliners, and you had your grandchildren, naturally if you didn't have the chair here and you folded your table back here, You'd have maximum, quite a lot of space here for the kids to play around while still not bothering you while you're watching TV and doing your other stuff, as you can see. So basically half the room would be you guys watching TV, 
the other part the kids could play quite easily because you'd have all that extra space, um, you know, to play with by having not an island in the middle. Uh, you know, those islands are nice, but they, <clears throat> they do take up a lot of room. And I know one other thing that you had a concern of when you were here, so I want to share that too. You asked, could you get to the refrigerator? Remember I said on the, um, <clears throat> on the uh, unit to the uh, left here, when the uh, slider's uh, all the way in, you could bring the slider out just a little bit and you can sneak right in here and walk over to the kitchen without any problem and get into it and do what you need to do. You can also, by the way, if you just brought that slider in a little bit, you can easily still open up these drawers without any problem to get at stuff and uh, without having to bring the other slider um, all the way uh, out again. And you can actually open the cabinets too. There's clearance on the cabinets. So if you had to get in here and get some food or some item like that, you could still do that with just minimizing the movement of your slide out on the left side. I don't know how that works for the having one of those islands in the middle like here. You may have a little bit more difficulty <clears throat> to get at the refrigerator and also, um, you may have to bring the slide outs on both sides out to kind of transfer us around that uh, cabin tree that comes over here that would come out here normally, the big, you know, the ones that, the big center unit kind of things. But remember, these are all just things that you have to consider. And as you know, um, <clears throat> those uh, long ta tables in the middle of the uh, kitchen do take up a lot of space. So, you know, it does does minimize your living area, especially if you're going to have your kids over, uh, grandchildren over and stuff like that. So these are just things I want to throw out at you. <clears throat> Again, not pressuring you whatsoever, but I know you're trying to make a decision and trying to weigh out all the good points and bad points. Uh, by the way, the, the unit, my RV, if you didn't know it, is 31 feet in length. Something else to consider is that um, <clears throat> I think with the pantries that you're talking about, which is off the, um, off the refrigerator... I think it's going to in mean that your RV would have to be longer in length to accommodate that, to best of my knowledge. So you got to keep that in mind as well. 31 feet can fit into all uh, state parks and things like of that nature. If you get into uh, bigger units with longer units, you may have more difficulty in getting some of the state parks because I think, the, if I'm not mistaken, and again, you guys are more RV experts than I am when it comes to traveling, um, I think around 31 is about the cutoff point for some of those state parks. When they get much larger than that, you, they can't accommodate that. So if you plan to go on a lot of state parks and things of that nature, uh, that's something else to consider. Uh, and the last thing also is when you go over here to these, um, <clears throat> these deep storage things that are over behind the TV, in the very front... If you wanted to, uh, like I put like extra coffee cans, if I have two or three extra, you know, big tubs of coffee, chips, things of that nature, I put them usually right in the front here. And I actually put canned goods and things in here too and other big things more to the front. Right now it's full with a lot of stuff. But you can also put uh, shelving against this wall if you wanted to and put more pantry space in there to give you more, you know, space if that's what you needed. And of course you got one on the top and one on the bottom as well. So anyways, these are only things to consider. Uh, again, not trying to press you at all, but I just, I know you're trying to make a decision and trying to weigh out all the good points and bad points of the different types of units you're saying, but I thought I'd share this with you. And I know this is a long video and I'm going to put it on YouTube and then send it to you as a little uh, link because it's going to be hard for me to just do it through uh, a text message to you. So I hope you appreciate that. Again, uh, no pressure whatsoever, but... I know that was a concern of yours and some of those things were things that you were considering and just things that you have to think about yourself. But anyways, I just want to share that there actually is quite a lot of space in here and with a little ingenuity, you could even increase the space quite easily. I, I for me personally, and as you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not much of a cook, as you could say, I'm embarrassed about that, but uh, I have never had a problem with the space. There's actually plenty of space in the cabinetry that I more than I need it, actually, but quite there is quite a lot. And remember, I don't know what kind of traveling you're going to do and long term you're going to use the RV for, but obviously having too much food items uh, in the uh, in the RV can be problematic too, because then it hangs around, especially if you're going to go and come and go and store it and that kind of thing. So keep those things in mind. Again, all just points of interest for you to know as you make your decision. And again, uh, no need to get back with me for any reason, but I thought I'd take the time to uh, give you a little bit of. Uh, uh, a video here because I know sometimes you come to see an RV so quickly you miss a lot of uh, key points and you don't really get a chance to really see everything and do the touchy feely that you'd like to do. So anyways, just points to share with you. Take care. Have a great night. Bye.